Everybody, guess what? My Ricoma EM1010 arrived. This video is going to show you what I had to do, how to set it up, some glitches because some of the screws and stuff that are on the Ricoma EM1010 now are different than in the video. I did a couple things that you're gonna wanna avoid because it wasted a bunch of my time and caused me a lot of frustration. So, this will help you get prepared for training so that once you go into training, you know what you need, what you should have looked at beforehand, and then what not to sweat, because it was super, super helpful. So watch this video, like and subscribe, follow along, especially if you're a newbie, I'm a newbie too. I have sewn before, but I've never had an embroidery machine. So hopefully I'll be a few steps ahead of you and I'm gonna share with you the good, the bad, and the ugly and hopefully help you save some time. So like, subscribe, follow along, here we go. The stupid snow and ice has finally stopped and my machine arrived and this guy couldn't have been nicer. I know they say don't expect them to bring it in the house, but this guy did without me even asking. So you know what that means? It means he got a bigger tip than I even expected to give him. He was happy and so was I. Just gonna give you a little bit of insight about what all you get. This is the thread and the backing that I got. And I will tell you the little thread guide they put inside, I really liked because other than having a printout of thread colors, this gives you an actual idea of what the thread colors look like. This little thing is invaluable. Rather than drag all that in the house, I just unboxed the parts to the stand, brought them in the house, and assembled the stand. I'm not gonna lie, I watched a YouTube video because it was a lot simpler to do that than to look at the written instructions. So I would recommend that you do that. I don't have a video of us actually bringing the machine into the house because I needed my hands to help bring it in. However, it was heavier than I expected, to be honest. We had two strong men plus me just to make sure that we cleared doorways, etc. So got it in, got it on the stand, and started unwrapping it. Got it all set up, and I'm not gonna lie, at this point I felt a little, well, maybe a lot overwhelmed because I realized all the videos in the world hadn't prepared me for this. The reason I decided to make this video is because there are some things that didn't quite add up right that caused me a lot of time. So I'm hoping by showing you these things, it'll save you the time and frustration that I had. The actual equipment that you get might vary a little bit from the video, the training videos they show you, and mine did. So just so you know, these are the screws they're talking about. Um, they look a lot different than is in the video. And also when you put that pole in underneath, you wanna slide your fingers under the thread tray to hold that other part of that screw stationary. So as you twist that pole, it will actually join. It's really important when you get to the point that you lift this top pole to elevate the thread tray, that both of them are extended fully. If they're not even, you're gonna have issues with your thread. Just because there's so much information right now, I put a sticker on thread number one so I could remind myself how they're numbered. So that back row is one, three, five, seven, nine, and the front row would be two, four, six, eight, ten. The other thing I wanna point out is, see these little things underneath the thread, these little plastic things? Do not put them on if you're using small thread hoops. I found that in a comment section on one of their YouTube videos, but nowhere in writing. The reason you don't wanna do that is because the thread gets caught on that little thing, and then you end up with the thread break notification, everything shuts down. So apparently those things are used when you use the larger spools of thread only. I use my nursing hemostats. These are called curved hemostats. They come in really handy to re-thread the needle, especially if you have something in the hoop. Here you can see I've taken those little plastic things off, put my thread directly on those little felt pads, and then when I re-ran it, everything went wonderful and the thread did not get tangled. So they'll send you this bottle of oil. This is the regular oil, like the sewing machine oil. And this tip, this pointy tip thing will be in 
your toolbox. So be sure to put that together like that. And then, because that will enable you to get every other down in there really nicely, right? So you can get the oil exactly where you need the oil to be, right? Because if you just use that fat tip, it's not gonna get where you need it to be. I ordered, just so you know, I ordered these off of Amazon. I got three of them. They go on kind of like a needle and see how they're a little longer. I like those a lot for in here. I just like that better, okay? So you wanna make sure that when you put the oil in, you're putting it where it's supposed to be. So that fine tip helps you do that. Okay, I really wanna show you this. So this is the, uh, to hoop your cap and you're supposed to do that for training. And I couldn't get mine on there for the likes of me. And so what we learned in training is the part right there, see that bolt down there? You can actually loosen that a little bit and then that can help um, that if you loosen that, then you can go this way or that way a little bit um, so that you can get your hat on. It's best in training not to have a nice solid cap like that because the needle that's on your Ricoma that comes, that's going to break it. So you want a softer uh, hat than that for your training, okay? But they'll have you cap it, and don't worry about it if you don't have it capped for training. Do not let that hold you up in training. Um, the gal in my training with me said, I'm never going to do hats, so she just sat and watched me do mine. So that's also an option, too, if you don't want that training, but I'd recommend that you get it, and even if you don't do it, if somebody else is, at least pay attention. The okay? other thing we learned in training is that some people were having trouble getting that hoop up under there, and so we just cranked that these just a tiny little bit because you still want that hoop to be tight, right? But it was so, this was so clamped down, there was no way we were getting our hoops on. So that was another little thing we went over in training. But seriously, on any of these bolts that you have to, you have to unloosen uh, or loosen up a little bit, just seriously, like the tiniest little turn goes a long way. So on the edge of the frame, there's this bolt here. And seriously, you guys, when you go to loosen that to either widen or make that more narrow so your hoops fit on, you only want to turn that like literally this much, like half a turn. If you turn it too much, there's two metal flat pieces under there that will just fall off. And it's kind of a pain getting it back on but you can do it before you actually touch that bolt. Look at the underside of that and take a picture of it. So if that happens to you, you'll see how it goes back on. I've never felt so stupid in my life, but it took forever. But you also want to take this little tool, this little bent tool. You want to get back in there. You want to loosen those screws take this off and clean under there. Because if you don't, and, and you also wanna put like a little bit of oil in there, but if you don't, take that plate off, clean that out, cause that's where your thread gets cut. And so there might be some pieces in there and you'll get birds nesting. So you wanna take that out, you wanna brush that off, you wanna put oil in there, um, you know, per their recommendations, which is every four hours of running, right? Because if you don't, and you're like, why am I getting bird nesting? It'll be because of that, because you're not doing that. And I will tell you that is a pain to get that under there. It's very tedious to get it off, but I'm telling you guys, do it, because you will regret it if you don't. I have to admit, there's a lot to learn, and I hope you find this video helpful. If you do, like, subscribe, and follow along. Next up, we're gonna talk about chroma, and how do we do a simple monogram or add a name to a shark?